Brian Dolesky with Able Distributors. Today, we're talking about something new. I'm, I'm very excited about it. We've been selling Renai tankless water heaters for years now. Everybody loves them. They love the service. They love everything about them. So it was a natural progression for us to move into the Renai Combi boilers. What is it? Boiler and a tankless water heater kind of blended together. It can heat your home. It can heat your domestic hot water for your faucets. At the same time, if you have more of a demand in one than the other, you can actually separate it and have the on-demand be for the domestic hot water and then the heating take a back seat, or they can do it at the same time. So let's get into it. First off, on the front of every single one of these is a nice piece of paper. It just simply says, key points for a successful installation. Basically what they did was they took the, the install manual shrunk it all down and here's the most important things from near boiler piping to setting up the parameters to hooking up your thermostats for the zones. So we're going to get inside. Now I've already removed, there's two Phillips screws on the bottom that you're going to have to remove. And then on top they did away with the screws and it's just two suitcase latches and it kind of makes it nice for getting into and out of. So with the door removed you can see Stainless steel primary, stainless steel secondary. It's a very unique layout to Renai, and that's why we love it so much. We've had nothing but success with their stuff. Up on top, and I'll get into this a little bit more later in the video, you've got an intake that, or an intake over here that you could keep plugged off and you can do a concentric intake and exhaust out of here, or you leave this in, two inch exhaust, two inch intake. You can go farther with this venting in two inch than ever before. I'll get into that in a little bit. You're gonna notice there's no port for checking combustion analysis because you don't have to do it on this. You're gonna see that no LP kit comes with this because it's automatic. You can just adjust it in the settings. You're gonna see that it's got a little intake filter that you can clean out, kind of keep the debris, very easy to maintain. Down below, we're going to get into the connections again uh, in a minute, but you have in and out for the boiler, in for the natural gas, the drain connection, and in and out for your domestic hot water, three-quarter connections. We're going to put some valves on that. I'm going to show you a picture of that in a minute. So primary heat exchanger, there's a flat plate back here. Behind this uh, black plastic shield is all the connections. Again, you can do four zones on this. Each zone has an R, W, and a C, so if you wanted to run a smart thermostat for each zone, you absolutely could. There's a few zones here dedicated if you wanted to do this with a hydronic air handler. Zone three is marked AH. That would be the zone where you could go in and say zone three is a hydronic air handler, so it knows how to work that. If you wanted recirc on your domestic hot water, Zone four can be a regular zone, or that's the, spe uh, the special zone for research. So you can go in there and set that up too. So I really love the versatility. We're going to get into the BTU range that we're bringing this in, because that's another thing. The way this is set up, before you had to buy the biggest combi boiler to make sure you had enough domestic hot water, and sometimes the boiler was just too big, it didn't know what to do with the extra BTUs. Now we have the option of bringing these in in 90, 150, and 199. So now that option to get the right BTUs for the heating, it does modulate, so now we can make sure the heating is correct and you have the maximum uh, ability to heat the domestic water because on the domestic water side, they're all 199,000 BTUs. So it really, really works great. This one, you'll get 5.1 gallons per minute. If you run it in a dedicated primary uh, call for domestic and then heating weights, if you run them both at the same time, you only you lose one GPM and it goes down to 4.1. So honestly, either way, I think you're golden. But let's get into more of the nitty gritty. Again, this is kind of an intro, an overview of this product. We're gonna have a what's in a box video we're gonna have service maintenance, and if you get an error code, what to do. And honestly, what you do is you call their amazing tech support that's open 24 seven. I've only used them once or twice. 
Every single time, oddly enough, it wasn't a problem with the unit. It was a bad regulator, and then uh, one, it was, uh, the intake was right outside of a, a dryer vent, plugged it up. But their tech support is phenomenal. I mean, if no other reason, it's worth this uh, expenditure just for that tech support alone. So let's get into some of the other nitty gritty, the specifications, and then I'm gonna show you all the connections on the bottom and what you need for there. Let's get into the next one. All right, let's keep going. The Renai Combi Boiler. As we discussed, you can heat your home and you do your domestic all in one unit. The units we're gonna bring in are a 90-199, a 150-199, and a 199-199. And the way this breaks down is the first number is the BTUs for heating. The second number is the BTUs for domestic hot water. So you can see we're going with the most domestic hot water we can get <clears throat> and an array of sizes for the heating. So it's all a good thing. It's capable of four heating zones. Now, if you wanted domestic hot water recirc, you're gonna use one of those zones for that, so then you're down to three. One zone would be if you wanted to do a hydronic air handler. It's a specific zone on that board. So if it's just straight heating and domestic and no circulation, you got four zones, and remember, it's got the R, the W, and the C, so it'll power your thermostat. The connections on the bottom, and I'm gonna show you some pictures in a minute. The central heating, the supply, and the return are a one inch male fitting. The domestic hot water is three quarter inch male fitting. The gas is three quarter male fitting. You can run this with half inch gas pipe, but really look at the manual because if you got 50 feet of half inch pipe before you get to this thing, it's not gonna be enough. Again, it's 199,000 BTUs that you're firing up here. If you've got a three quarter or one inch leg that comes down and you've got maybe 10 feet a half inch, you're probably gonna be fine. But again, check the instructions. And then the drain is half inch. And then we sell a fitting that will take it from half inch uh, female to PVC three quarter. So you can just glue a drain. Warranty, now this is pretty spectacular. 12 years on the heat exchanger, at stainless steel heat exchanger, obviously they have a lot of trust in it. Five years on all the other parts, which for a boiler is pretty darn good. One year labor, that's pretty phenomenal right there. The biggest thing to me, because I get a lot, a lot of calls on other brands where their tech support at some time or another closes for the day or closes for the holiday or whatever, 24 seven tech support, truly amazing. And they have this way of doing the tech support where they use your phone and they kind of ask you to go over the model serial number, look at this, look at this. Like I said, twice I had to use it, twice they found things that had nothing to do with the tankless that were problems. So I, I thank them for that. Domestic hot water, you can put it on priority and you get 5.1 gallons per minute. So that means if there's a call for domestic hot water, you're showering or you're running your laundry or something like that, for up to an hour, it'll just concentrate on that and it won't heat. If you want them to do heating and hot water at the same time, you lose one gallon per minute so again, check the home. If you have questions, if, you, if you're in doubt whether either five or four gallons per minute is going to be enough, let us know. We can help you out there. The 150 and lower can cascade with a CX tankless. So that means if the heating BTUs is more than enough, but you're exceeding the domestic call and you need more than this, we can take this combi boiler and put a tankless water heater next to it, have them run together to give you more domestic capacity. Again, if that's an issue, please call. We can help you out with that. It's got a low water cutoff connection built in. There's, I'll show you in a minute. There's a little jumper in there now, but if you needed for code a low water cutoff, it's got the connection built in. <clears throat> Venting. Again, we like it to be easy and this is easy. You can take room air from, for this, this boiler. Again, if you were gonna do that, I would run it up and gooseneck it just so nobody sets an instruction manual or kids drop stuff in there. Two inch, you can run up to 75 feet. I always say, check the venting guide because each elbow, each 45 adds length. So it's not just 75 feet of straight pipe. You gotta account for what an elbow counts as, what a termination counts as, all those things add up feet. So 75, 
is a good number, but remember you got to deduct all those fittings that you put on it. Three inch to 160 feet, same thing. Check the venting guide. Obviously, most homes, you're not going to have to go near this length to get out of the building. The Renai Control app, every single piece, every single appliance, every single box has a QR code. So I would think ahead of time, get the QR code, get the app put on your phone. Now you can download and do all the programming right from your phone with the cover completely on. If you don't want to do that, you can still do it with the pad. It's just, it might be easier for you to just do it from your phone, have more um, of a display to, to play with. So that's always a good idea. Up next, I'm gonna just get into some of the pictures. We're gonna show you pictures of the board, pictures of the bottom, stuff like that, and then we're done. So hang on, we're moving on to the next part. All right, let's get into the last little bit here. So obviously this is a, a picture from the top. You can see this is the mounting flange. Again, when you hang it on the wall, you're gonna hang it on that bracket, but that bracket to me is just a guide to help you hang it. Back it up with some screws. You'll see a bracket like this on top. We can put a couple screws and one on the bottom. That means kids, a dog, whatever happens in this house, that tank is staying on the, on the wall. You can see the suitcase latches I was telling you about before. It still has two Phillips screws on the bottom, but this definitely helps in making it super easy. So you can hang the door, latch it, and then put your screws in later. The bottom. So you can see central heat out, central heat in. Again, these are one inch male connections. You got domestic hot water out domestic hot water in. There is a little strainer here to filter the water as it comes in. It's just a, a mesh screen strainer. So if you got a lot of debris, uh, Teflon tape, whatever it is, it'll get caught there. So part of your maintenance is gonna be making sure you take care of that. You've got your gas in, and that's the port to check your incoming gas pressure if you ever need to. And that's a three quarter connection. And then you've got a cap here that can be removed and half inch thread for your trap. So that trap is built up inside the cabinet. If you want to clear out that trap and drain it, you remove this little plug and it drains the trap. Otherwise, you're gonna connect your drain right to there. I started out by saying that on the front of every one of these is a key points for successful installation. I love this piece. One side is for the combis, one side is for not. So that piece is on every single one. I discussed the valve kit because when you do a tankless or a combi, you want some way of flushing out that flat plate heat exchanger that does the domestic because the domestic and the boiler water never mix. So this valve kit goes on the bottom. We sell it. I'll have the part number below, but you can see here's for the hot water side and there's a spot there for the pressure relief valve to screw into. Now let's say just the way it's piped, you just don't have room for the relief valve to go there. It also comes with this T that would go between this and the unit, and that T would allow you to pivot where that relief valve goes. So you just take this three quarter plug out, put it there, put the relief valve right in there. Now you've got your domestic relief valve and you've got the cold water inlet side. What this allows you to do is this connection here and this connection here, we can close the valve. So we're separating the boiler from the domestic hot water of the home and we can flush through that flat plate heat exchanger to make sure it's clean and all the sediment is out. And this is the little adapter that we sell to take a half inch male thread to three quarter PVC. And again, when you do that, put an air brake, put an uh, open T someplace so that we know that we're not gonna get, uh, we have an adequate air brake. Manuals, obviously it comes with them. It comes with the homeowner series and the install guide. This is the bracket. Again, you'll mount this on the wall. It's very easy to hang the, the boiler on that bracket. It catches real easy. It's got screens if you run it in two inch all the way out. It's got screens for the intake and the exhaust. It's got an outdoor temperature sensor. If you don't know how that works, on a mild day, it doesn't let the boiler go all the way to full demand. It meters it down a little bit so we don't overshoot. So if I were to heat up this concrete floor of my office, and it was only 40 degrees out and I got this floor too hot, we'd overshoot the thermostat. That kind of lets you choose to kick it down. Now you can use it or not. And then it comes with a pressure relief valve 
for the boiler. Inside the boiler, you can see the primary heat exchanger is stainless. There's a little screen in there for the intake. This is the inducer motor. You've got the, the pump down here, and you've got controls down here. Here's the Grunfoss 1578 pump. It's a nice pump. That pumps through the boiler, pulls in on the return side. You can see the control panel. Again, if you download the app, you can do everything on your phone. If you don't want to go through that, you can do everything on the control panel. And then here's that plastic shield that covers up the electrical components and the board. We'll get, we'll get a look at that next. And that's just another look at what that thing does, whether you have the, cat, the cascade function, the outdoor uh, temperature sensor, all that stuff. All right, here's the board and you can see T1, T2, T3, T4, all these are the zones. This is your low water cutoff with a jumper in there from the factory. So if you don't need a low water cutoff, just leave that in. This is a look as it's hanging on the wall down below. You can see your drain, the bottom of the trap, your, your central heating, central heating, domestic in and out, and your gas pipe. This is the top. You can see the suitcase latch there. This is, if you wanted to do a concentric, you pull out this whole thing. Your exhaust would be through the center and your concentric intake would be around the outside. Most guys are gonna remove this little cap. Just take that screw out, remove the cap. That'll take two inch PVC, that'll take two inch PVC. So if you need to go further than two inch would allow you to, then absolutely, then you increase to three. Now on all of these, they're recommending CPVC. It handles a lot more heat and temperature than PVC. PVC maxes out right about 140 to 150. CPVC, I think goes over 200. CPVC, you can glue and cut and do everything just like PVC. It's just a higher temperature. So remember, if you're doing a 199, you're gonna to wanna to do CPVC on the venting. And this is just an overview. This is, the, this is the whole boiler, what it looks like without the door on. You can see the pump, the pad for the controller, the board, the primary heat exchanger, inducer motor, that's it. That's everything to do with the combi boiler from Renai. I think this thing is gonna rock. Able distributors, thank you.